Well, thanks, Jason. In regards to that, I would love to pass this on. <laughs> uh, because, you know, the day may come that I am ill and, you know, I'll be getting calls and people will have to like try to muddle through it. So I have Holland, he's like almost there and I'm, I'm really excited to share my knowledge and, and like just share with Holland or anyone that's willing, you know, that's the thing is. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's more than the technical stuff. It's more than the Zoom. I, I get that, So, but that's a big piece. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyone that's, that's willing, uh, that is my, my desire for anyone that's willing. I want to share, I want to give, I want to help. Um, and, and that's just such a, you can't find people that are willing. And that's, you know, you, you have people that are like saying, okay, since you can't find anybody, but the person that raises their hand and any teacher probably could attest to this, like, unless it's that one kid that always raises their hand, but the kid that raises their hand, you want to call on them. You want to be like, okay, John, go. Or Sarah, go. Just because they're so willing. So anyways, that has nothing to do with my message today, but I just wanted to, <laughs> to share. Uh, shameless plug, get people to do work. <laughs> that, thanks, Jason. <laughs> Jason said it's a shameless plug to help people do work. Uh, so anyways, um, we're going to try this. So. Here is uh, our, our start of our series, even though we kind of started last week. Um, Jason, do you think you could grab the book there and just kind of put it down? Thank you. <clears throat> so um, as Jason shared last week on fasting, I really feel like fasting was to kind of help prepare us for the new year, prepare us to, to get ready. Um, the thing about fasting and for myself, what I've been doing is um, last week I did Tuesday and Thursday, 100%, no food, just water. And um, I don't share that to boast. I just share that to, to just share with everyone that I'm, I'm choosing to do it this way. And, and it, it's very difficult um, to go 24 hours without any sort of food um, by around 8 30 I start to feel the the hunger and and I want to just satisfy that hunger and um it, it's it's good but I think of it like cleaning my system you know it's like cleaning my system and then I guess on Wednesday I just gorged myself and it was not very good I had an upset stomach so anyways um I'm just sharing that because uh you know as we are going through this new year series um, to be able to go through a fasting phase and, and clear the system. It really um, helps us to, to have that fresh start, to have that, that reset. And so today the title of my message is the great reset. Um, oftentimes we have uh, you know, we come to the new year and we're like, hey, it's a new year, new me kind of saying. And, and the thing about new is that we're drawn to the new. We want the new thing, you know, and it's not that new things are always harmful, but it can become harmful. We, we can always want to be um, the type of person that has to have the latest iPhone. We have to have the most up-to-date computer. We have to have um, this new car every, you know, five years or every other year or whatever it might be. We have to have those new shoes that just came out. They're limited edition. You got to get them now. Um, handbags, it, it just, the list goes on. We have to be up-to-date and, and that's not really our fault. It's actually a culture thing. Our culture has built this idea that we have to have new. You know, there used to be a thing called TV repair shops. Not anymore. These things right here, like the screens are $300 and we just toss them in the landfill and get a new one. And it's even better than the old one was. But years ago, we would spend the time, take it to the TV repair shop and it would be there for a week and it'd come back. And now you have a clean picture and, you know, um, 
there's nothing wrong with having new things, but I do see some issues that, that arise when we desire to have new things all the time. The other thing that comes with, with new things, new things always become old. We had, um, in 2008, we, I got into a car accident in Katie's car and this car that she had before we were married. And um, I got into this little accident, the insurance totaled out the car. And I was like, Katie, what are we gonna do? So we decided that we would get a new car. Um, we wanted to get a brand new car. And I traded in this pickup truck and got this 2008 Honda Accord. Um, we settled on it. And, but we were both satisfied with what we got out of it. Like I was able to get the technology package and Katie got this beautiful color green. And the wonderful thing about buying a new car is that you have the options all laid out for you. And you have this ability to pick and choose exactly what you want and make it your own. And then you drive away and you go out and you wash it and you keep it clean and like, five months down the road or so, what was new becomes old and you start to neglect it a little bit and you start to like see that same car everywhere. And you're like, oh, it's not new anymore. So you start to lack in the care and um, you, just, you just don't have that same desire. So what do you do? You're not satisfied. So you go out and get a new one because you need to satisfy that need to have new and, and that's where we get trapped up. God doesn't want us to just, um, he doesn't want us to just always desire the new, because as we'll see, he has done new things, but sometimes we don't give him the opportunity to finish what he's done. So um, I just wanna take a moment and, and pray um, just because I'm feeling a little anxious and I just feel like, the spirit needs to speak through me. So let me pray for us and uh, we'll keep going. Father God, I thank you just for today. I thank you mostly all for your grace. And um, I just ask that the Holy Spirit would just come over me and, and just let me be your vessel to speak a word of encouragement, a word that will bring um, just about change in people's lives, God. God, that it would just be a time that we can um, look to you and not, not rely on our own understanding, but we would just continue to lift you up and do the things that you want for our lives to be able to build us up and further your kingdom each and every day. Jesus, I thank you so much for the love that you have for us and for uh, the love of the Father that allowed you to come to this earth and to die on a cross so that we might have the grace to be able to come and, and have this community with you, Jesus. Amen. Um, hard reset is, is, you know, one of those things like you've had issues with your computer and like the first thing, if you're on the line with um, technical service, they're like, is it plugged in? Yeah. Okay, well, let's try resetting. Yeah, I've already done that. Well, let's try resetting. I told you, I've already done that. Okay, but let's just try again. So then you're like, okay. And they always say, turn it off, unplug it, leave it for 30 seconds and then plug it back in. That's like a hard reset. Soft reset would be just pushing the button until it rebooted. But if, if we just start with a hard reset from the beginning and it's not fixed, then, then how is that going to, I mean, how is that going to help us in our life? Oftentimes, we think of New Year's as a time to, um, you know, have a hard reset in our life. It gives us a time of reflecting, kind of resetting the things. We get to make new goals. And, and then eventually, we, we kind of start to fall off track. I mean, who's, who's seen that? Like, in their own life, who's seen where they make a resolution and they think they're doing pretty good for a few months and then they start to lack. And then they're like, okay, I'm gonna reset again and I'm gonna start fresh and then I'm gonna make goals. And then I'm gonna, like we do this year after year. It's, it's that same cycle. And we can't do that on our own. 
we we need Jesus to help us through that cycle and break that cycle because oftentimes we get stuck in that same cycle. And I'd like to just, I'd like to say, hey guys, let's just stop the cycle and let's just ask Jesus what needs to change in our life. Psalms 71, 20 through 21 says, you have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. We will see hardships in our life. There's a promise there that we will suffer a hardship. But that comes with a promise that we will be restored. And not only will we just be restored to where we were, we will be restored to even greater honor and even greater comfort than once before. So, resets change everything. When you reset something and you haven't saved your work, what happens? You have to start again, right? And it's difficult sometimes. It's difficult to keep the old things when we reset. So what I'm saying is like, you have to let go of those old things. You did that once before, it didn't work for you. Why are you keep going back? Think about the Israelites when, when they were delivered out of Egypt, what, ex- what did they want? Well, can we just go back to Egypt? Cause it was easier there. But God had a greater story for them. God knew that he was going to bring them into this promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. But they had to endure that hardship. So when we look back to Psalms 71, they endured hardship, but God basically gave them a double portion from what they once had. Life in Egypt was difficult. And life... On the, on the other side of the Jordan was far better. So I think about, when I think about hard resets, <clears throat> in 1988, my grandma Carmen got us this awesome Nintendo Entertainment System. And it, it was so cool, so cool. Um, it had the power pad, it had the, the duck hunting um, zapper, and it was so fun. But the thing about this is there was no way to save your progress. And you know what would be the worst when you had a younger brother and I was hogging it? He would come and hit the reset button. <laughs> and then we'd, a fight would ensue and like things would just get so bad. There was another problem with these things that would glitch out sometimes. You see this little character here, the guy, he's blowing into the cartridge Sometimes when you're playing your game, it would just glitch out and like there'd be lines on the screen. And the only way to fix it was to reset it, pull this out, blow in it, put it back in, and then get back to the place that you were. I would spend hours doing this, not necessarily blowing, but I would spend hours of time trying to get back to where I was, whether it was level seven, one or seven, two, but I'll tell you what, I got really good at level one, one, and I found all the secrets and I was super fast, but it came with so much practice because of those hard resets. Oftentimes um, in the Bible, people were given uh, new names. And when they were given a new name, it was as if they were changed. The new name brought a uh, a new identity to them. And as we go through you'll see um, one of the first ones to get a new name was Abram, which means exalted father. It was changed to Abraham by God, which means exalted father of many. So a very small change, Abram to Abraham, but he was promised to be the father of nations. And that you can find that in Genesis 17, five. Sarai, his wife, just simply means my princess. But Sarah means exalted princess. So taking it from one place to another place, she has a new identity. Um, Jose, Hosea, uh, means salvation, which was Joshua's name. 
Joshua, Yahweh is salvation. And that can be found in Numbers 13, 6. So he was already something similar, but he was then a, like brought to a new level and brought to a new identity. Simon, who we know um, was given a new name by the name of Peter. Simon means to hear, to listen, to understand, to respond. And Cephas, or Peter, in the Greek um, or Greek English, means rock. And Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church. Another time in Hosea 1.9, God had had enough of Israel and the Israelites. And so he said, lo, ami, not my people. And he changed that later in Hosea 2 to ami, my people. So low meaning not. And he did the same to the female half of the Israelites from Ro, uh, Lo, I uh, practice this. <laughs> lo Rahama, no mercy to Rahama, mercy or compassion. And then we know of the story of Saul, who, who we would say became Paul, but the truth is, he was known by both names. It says that in Acts 13, he also went by Saul. So Paul, meaning small or uh, cessation or stopper, so complete stop. Um, Saul, me sorry, Saul meaning ask or question, and Paul meaning small sensation or stopper. And then there was another piece there that just said humble. But that wasn't in the, um, the Strong's Dictionary. It was uh, in a translation, so humble. So um, Paul, mm, sorry. We constantly pray for change in our life. We are always wanting to, to make a change, um, we're not really satisfied. Sometimes we could be satisfied to a point, but then we, we are constantly disappointed by things that happen in our life and change doesn't come. So what do we do? We get into a little hot water and we pray. We pray for the situation to, to change, for God to bring about um, uh, just a removal of that situation because we're uncomfortable. We're not called to be comfortable. We're called to press on, to fight the good fight, to run the race, to keep the faith. Jesus says in John 16, 33, I'm sorry. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You can keep praying for a fresh start. When you haven't even begun to, sorry, you can't keep praying for a fresh start even when you haven't even begun to finish what God has already started in you. Jesus prayed on the cross that God had forsaken him, but Jesus knew what was about to come and that he must do. I did want to go back um, just to, to Paul for a moment because I found some interesting things about Saul. We know that Saul persecuted the, the early church and he persecuted Christians because he thought that um, his religion, um, being a Jewish man, a man of Jewish um, uh, a, he came from a, a affluent Jewish family and um, he was a, a Levite or sorry, he came from the tribe of Benjamin. And it's interesting because he was, was a person from Tarsus, which isn't close to Jerusalem. Like in our day, it would be pretty close just because we can travel so much faster, but it was a, it was a journey. And it's interesting to me 
that as a young boy, his parents sent him to Jerusalem to the, to the best school so that he can be trained. And through that, he was trained by the Pharisees and he was able to um, kind of come up through the ranks. And as he was getting older, he, he became more and more um, just um, schooled on, on, on Jewish traditions. And then he became one that worked uh, in the, the uh, I guess he worked as a Pharisee is what I'm trying to say. And God knew we would look at that and go, that's terrible that like God, that this would happen. Like this man would come and persecute Christians because we know that Jesus came, but we, at, at the time, they didn't really know who Jesus was, and they wanted to stop whatever Jesus' movement was doing. They wanted to stop, and so Paul took it up, Saul took it upon himself to go out and persecute Christians, kill them, and he didn't care because he knew the truth that he had in his heart, but God knew something more. God knew that, that he wanted to take Saul, and he would see something even greater because he knew he would send Paul not just to um, uh, Israel, but he would send him to other parts of the world because, because Paul's heart was for Tarsus. His heart was for the rest of the world. And he, he, would, he would move through and he would make changes. God knew the things that, that Paul would do. And so through his conversion, Paul was walking on the road to Damascus. And obviously, we, we understand that, that God got a hold of him and made him blind and then gave him instruction. And he, he went um, on to Damascus or on to, yeah, to Matt, Damascus. And he, he um, found a person there and began his conversion. But in, oh, messed up. God grabbed a hold of him and he became Christian. And it was time for him to put to death his former life. And he bore a new, he bore his new life as a Christian and he would devote his life to seeing the church of Jesus grow. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So in Christ, all things become new. So we can't become new on our own. We can try to strive to get those new things. We could try to, to get, you know, to a place. And I think that's where God had put my heart when I shared earlier is just, we can't do these things on our own. We need, we need Christ. I have a, uh, a, a chapter in James, um, chapter 1, 2 through 18, that I'd like to read and share some final thoughts. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all generosity and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the person ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in his ways. Now, the brother or sister of humble circumstance is the glory of his high position, but the rich person is to, is to glory in his humiliation because like a flowering grass, he will pass away for the sun rises when it's scorched, when it's scorching heat and withers the grass and its flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is dis destroyed. Also, the rich person in the midst of his pursuits will die out. 
Blessed is the man who preserves, perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Not one is to say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, but he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has run its course, brings forth death. Do not be deceived by my beloved brothers and sisters. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation, variation or shifting shadows. In the exercise of his will, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would be kind, be a kind of first fruit among his creation. The plan from the beginning in Genesis 1.1, we know that um, God created the earth and he placed the earth on its axis and brought everything to sustain life there before he brought forth his, the crowning glory, I believe, of his creation. And that is us, us human beings made in his image. And then he knew that we would fall. He knew that we would sin. And he gave us laws to follow, but those laws were just to show us that we would fall short and that we could not do it on our own, but we needed, we needed the savior, the savior, Jesus to come and, and to be the sacrifice once and for all so that we would, would um, be able to be in communion once again, like Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden. Often. We need these cycles of growth and failure and regrowth because when things grow back, they grow back stronger. When, when a tree has been, been pushed over, and I've seen this at my house, when a tree has been pushed over by um, a young buck, that tree will come back and its scars are there, yes, but its wounds have been healed and it's got a, a thicker callus around it and and the tree might have been leaning, but eventually the, the tree writes itself up and it becomes stronger in its roots so that the next time that that, that buck comes to rub the velvet off of its uh, antlers, that tree can withstand another um, rubbing from that, from that deer. But we can't do it on our own strength. God, he's the one that... that sent his son so that we can have that that second growth that we could be stronger and have that resilience he gave us the gift of the holy spirit and that holy spirit gift is is often overlooked by people i believe i believe that we often forget and i'm guilty of it that we have the gift of the holy spirit and we try to do things on our own and only once we become once we try and we come to that failure, then we realize that we can't do it on our own and we have to let go and let God. Romans 8, 31, 39 says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over us all. How will he not also with him freely given, freely give us all things? Who will bring changes? Who will bring charges against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, but rather was, who is the at the right hand of God, also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or trouble or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? For the sake, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. 
but in those things, sorry, but in all these things, we are overwhelmingly conquered through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to encourage you today. If you feel like you have been in this cycle of, of like, trying to set these resolutions, set these things, just give those up, just give them up because we can try to set goals on our own, but we've found time and time again that it leads to failure. God has something fresh and new for you today. And I just ask that if that's something you want, then just ask him for what you want and see what happens. Don't try to go out and make it happen. Don't try to go and do the things that you need to do to, to, to set it up and make it happen. I'm not saying don't train yourself. Don't, don't be in the word. Don't be out in the world. Don't, I'm not saying don't go to school. But what I'm saying is don't try to do it under your own power. Because every time we try to do it under our own power, failure comes. We can get so far. And then we fail. I've tried many times in my life to do things on my own and it has come just to a mediocre end. Like it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fully there. Jason had shared that God put on my heart a desire to, to help young men, to mentor young men and God has burned a desire for young men in my heart. I've shared about the young men that I've helped through just mentorship. And I probably, I do that probably because I don't feel like I had that great of person in my life to kind of direct me through. Um, I would say that I'm very thankful for my dad and the, the things that that he did to impart things in me. Um, but those things always fall short. Those things get me so far, but to get to where I want to be, I need the love of God to come and, and take me the rest of the way. There's one thing that both my parents would, would um, always share is that they love us, my brother and I so much. And that is one thing that I would never forget. The time that I um, was driving and was just in a very depressed state, it's that one thing that kept me um, from taking my life it's in the car and driving 100 miles an hour towards a big pole. And it was that one thing that kept me from, from taking my life is, is the love of my parents, the love of God to know that I would be without the love of them, that I would leave them in a position without loving a son. Like I just see that the things that I try to do in my own strength always seems to fail. So I just want to encourage you today that if you're finding yourself in a position where you're trying to set this up and you're trying to make these plans and you're trying to make these things happen and they just don't seem to be working the way you're that you're going and, and they continue to fail, just give them up and give them to God because he's the one that's going to take it. He's the one that's going to make your dreams come true. I'm not saying that like everything that you have your heart's desire will come exactly the way that you envision them because sometimes the way that God envisions things comes about in a different way, but it satisfies your desire for those, those new things. So this year, as we start this year fresh, just be open to what God has for you. Father God, I thank you so much for just loving us so much that, that nothing can separate us from your love. You created us first. 
so that we could have a sustaining life. And we failed you time and time again. But God, grace that you gave us has kept us in, in community and relationship with you. Not just this far off relationship, but this personal relationship with you. That we have this ability to come to you and pour our hearts out to you and say, this is what I'm struggling with. This are the things that I need help with. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing. Thank you for, for the life. And you get to be there through the hard and the, the great times. This week, God, I just ask that you would just revive us a spirit of, of reliance on you, that we just stop using the things that we um, have done in our own strength, but we just give that up and we just let you do the things that you do in our lives, God. Bless everyone. And I just ask that you would um, bless those that aren't with us today and just um, help them to... Um, understand that you love them no matter where they are and i pray this in jesus name amen, amen. amen. yeah so i think the <clears throat> word that i was just receiving feeling from that uh, message was just this um and he's talking about the great reset or this cycle that we get in we get in this cycle we try to do this thing and it doesn't it doesn't quite work out every time we keep trying to do this thing on our own we keep trying to do this thing uh, that we have in our mind that we would like to accomplish but uh, when God gets involved when when we had you know like with with Paul Paul wanted to be this certain person and he was this high and mighty person and thought he'd be his fame and fortune would be doing all this stuff that he did and he did he was doing it in a way like really to build himself up but then when when God truly got involved when he was able to turn over his life to God, uh, that great reset kind of took place. And uh, when we try to just keep doing the plans that we have, the thoughts that we have and the way that we want them, we keep trying over and over and continue to fail. But uh, just what Donald was just saying about, let's add God to the mix this year. Let's add, say, God, we need you to be involved because we cannot do this on our own. We can't make this thing happen on our own. And, and even when it comes to, you know, just the, uh, the cycles that we get in with our, the way that we think and our the mental ability to say, okay, I'm going to be this kind of person this year. And then uh, we fail again. And we're back in the place that we were at. But, um, you know, just like these examples that, that Donald gave, eight, eight people that had their, um, their names changed. It's like when God got involved in the situation, when God's presence came, when we released control, Abraham's desire was to have kids. He didn't ever have, he didn't have kids. He was worried. I'm like, I'm not going to have this inheritance. And God said, I'm going to take care of it when I'm involved. And when you're trusting me, I'm going to change your name. I'm going to change everything. And, uh, you know, we know that when God gets involved, we have all these cycles that happen where we feel like we failed and we need to even I really love that, uh, the word that Donald had earlier today, which was just saying, God, you take control. I've tried this so many times on my own, and I'm trying this difficult thing now. I'm stepping into something new now. Uh, God, you take control, and you come and be a part of it. And the thing that God is a part of is the thing that uh, he desires for you. He didn't desire for Abraham, Abram to be uh, the father, a father he had desired for him to be a father of many mm -hmm. and uh, just allowing God to be involved in that, that great reset and that cycle that we feel like we get in all the time. So amen. Thank you, Donald, for the, the word. Thank you for sharing with us. I love the Nintendo. <laughs> we can, it's amazing. Like those certain things that every kid, at least our age can remember doing <laughs> and uh, everybody can remember blowing on the, uh, the Nintendo games. No, not our kids, yeah. but us, yeah. us kids. Nikki, you? We didn't have an account. We couldn't afford it. Okay, well. <laughs> we would never we, 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 we really. really <laughs> but yeah. I remember other friends having it. Yeah, blowing on those games. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, coming. Thank you, Donald, for bringing the word and Katie for the worship. Uh, thank you, everybody that was here.